Well, hello, everybody. I was just on a little bit ago and had to uh, restart the computer. It was having some issues. Uh, well, not the computer itself, but I forget. I don't turn it off for, like, days on end. And I guess it gets kind of weird when it needs updates and all that kind of stuff. So when vMix, uh, the software I use to, uh, to live stream, it starts getting all weird and stuff like that. So I have to restart the computer. So my fault. Yeah, one of those things where I just, uh, I, you know, laziness and not shutting down the computer. Um, anyways, so... Today's subject is going to be about being an empath or being sensitive to energy and stuff like that. And I'm actually taking from an article I had put it on, put on my blog um, not too long ago. Well, it's actually been a while. It's been a year and a half ago. So um, anyway, so I want to talk a little bit about that. And I want to talk about uh, other things that are getting ready to come up. First thing I want to just show you guys is um, the conference that Justin and I are going to. And I am... Mm, don't think this is going to show up. I had some issues. Just bear with me one second. I'm going to actually pull it up here uh, so that you guys can see the website that it is. It's the Eclipse of Disclosure uh, com. And uh, yeah, I'm going to put it up on the screen. It's just pulling up right now. And well, uh, maybe it's not going to come up. Anyways, the website is down in the. Um, the description down below. Well, here, here it's pulling up. Here we go. All right, so it's uh, uh, August 18th through the 21st at Mount Shasta, California. Um, if you can't get out there, it's it's uh, that's okay because they have a um, a webcast ticket. Uh, speakers are going to be Corey Good, uh, Dr. Michael Sala, Laura Eisenhower, Jordan Sather is going to be there, and of course uh, my good friend Justin Deschamps. Uh, this will be his first big event he's speaking at. I'm pretty excited and really proud of him, and. Um, so uh, we'll be getting him. I'm pretty excited. So you guys can actually go to Eclipse of Disclosure, and uh, you'll be able to uh, see that uh, as well. So uh, I know the stream was fading in and out there as I was trying to show you um, that website. It's Eclipse of Disclosure. I, I got a feeling that website's just uh, taking up a lot of bandwidth and uh, you know affecting the live feed. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so. Um, th what I want to talk about is empathy. So that's the big thing I wanted to talk about today. And so um, let's let's start off with this uh, this quote where it says, "Empathic people, dreamers, and idealists have this sort of accidental power. Most spend their early uh, years ridden with self doubt, insecurity, and people pleasing habits. But their journey is inevitably derailed when the comfortable life gets uprooted by an unexpected darkness. Suddenly, their fr trusted methods no longer seem to bring them happiness." At first, this uh, depression convinces them that they may never feel joyful again, but ultimately it sets them on this quest for something more, uh, for love, justice, and wisdom. Once this adventure begins, there is no stopping a dreamer, and when dreamers unite, well, that's how we start to change the world. So let's think about this for a second. The, the one part of this that it talks about, um, you know, when they're young, they do a lot of people pleasing and self doubting and stuff like that. So they be, they're, a lot of them are very codependent. Uh, they fall in love with narcissistic people, or they, uh, the, you know, they, you know, because of opposites attract and empath, empath, uh, empaths are very and people that are sensitive to energy are, you know, very much caring of other people. They put themselves in other people's shoes. They try to see other people's side of things, and then they forget to sometimes see their side of things as well, and they forget to have their own voice spoke, you know, to speak out with their own voice. So that's something, and we all know that the universe has to have a give and take. You know, relationships have to have a give and, take, give and take, and sometimes, especially with narcissistic people, they're all about me, 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 and, you know, they're they're very self-absorbed and not necessarily uh, interested in seeing what you're, what you're, um, what you're feeling and stuff like that. So that's uh, that drains a, uh, a, a an empathic person, and you know they get really uh, drained, and then they, they get their feelings hurt, and they, they feel so much that's that's not a good thing for them. So what happens is they they might have been sort of kind of in this false sense of happiness for a lot of years in their younger years, and then eventually what they do is they get into this uh, things get taken away from them. I call it the um, 
basically the cosmic two by four up the up against the wall and they get into this whole um what what some people call the dark night of the soul and all that kind of stuff and it takes them to this whole depression i had this happen to me at the age of 32 and and so then they realized that everything that they found uh, that they thought was making them happy wasn't really and they weren't being fulfilled and then they have to start learning how to love themselves and go into a different realm of thinking with themselves and they have to start uh, learning to honor themselves and that's something that uh, a lot of you out there have experienced you've experienced this awakening or you're starting to experience it and uh, maybe you didn't know that you were sensitive to energy but we're going to talk about some things uh, here that um, will maybe give you some ideas that you are sensitive to energy and you are an empath. Um, so first thing here um, is uh, you feel uh, people's emotions even when they aren't around. If you're an empathic person, you can pick up the energy field of others even when they are not around you. They can be on the furthest uh, side of the city or country, but you are still able to pick up their emotions. For someone who is sensitive to energy, it is important to have a habit to ask themselves, are these feelings mine. So that's important. You can save yourself a lot of uh, suffering if you can recognize whether you're feeling bad because someone else's energy field or because of your own. That's a quick question. So if you're like in a great mood and all of a sudden poof, something happens and you know you're like oh I don't know wh where this is coming from. I, I don't understand like you know why am I feeling so sad and it may mirror back because uh, that's something you have to understand too is that um, sometimes things mirror back in emotions that um are your own personal emotions so like uh, a lot of times it's uh, you're actually just picking up some kind of sadness and you're like I don't oh, mm, where's this all coming from I don't understand uh, and sometimes if it's somebody that's close to you it'll it'll like mirror back so like maybe they're feeling really bad about something and then all of a sudden uh, you'll start feeling bad about something but it'll surface up like things that like feelings about something that you're like you haven't even thought about in years and you're like where's this coming from so you can dive into that emotion and say hey this we Hmm, this is a long time ago. We don't have to feel bad about this anymore. This is done and over with in the past. Let's let go. We already forgave this. Let's move on. So those are things that you can do to help yourself. But you have to be careful because sometimes um, with uh, with being an empath, you will pick up other people's emotions. Uh, my friend Sylvie Ann came into my house one day, and she was just having a really bad day. And this is like years ago. And all of a sudden, I just felt this overwhelming just pain in my stomach. I was like, what is going on with you? And she said... Uh, Oh, I just got an old argument with so and so and so and so. I'm not going to go into all the details. This is personal, but um, and then I was like, well, um, and I just uh, we just energy work and stuff like that, and got her back in balance and stuff like that. And that's what's happening. I mean, you're you know, you pick up those emotions, and if you're not aware of it, can it can you'll be like, oh, I don't even want to go out anymore. I'm just like over it, and then life stops happening because you're so overwhelmed with other people's emotions, and you're picking up all their stuff, and you don't want that. You don't want to have other people's emotions. Um, mess with your own life. So next one here says you feel overwhelmed in crowded places. You prefer small crowds or being alone uh, rather than being in a large groups of people where you can t uh, uh, take all the negative negativity of others upon yourself. So um, <clears throat> I actually love going to concerts. Uh, here's my problem is that I get into these large crowds of people and I start picking up all this stuff and um, my friend Damien's always asking me like why are you coughing so much and it's par par partially because I'm like <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, clearing my throat but I'm just picking up all of this stuff and especially when I get like I used to like to get into mosh pits when I was in my 20s and so I would get into those mosh pits or and getting up into the where people were crowd surfing and these concerts and stuff like that and there was just so much around me that they would um it would just be overwhelming in the amount of stuff that was happening inside of me. And so, you know, doctors might want to prescribe that as asthma or anxiety or whatever. It's not necessarily anxiety. I'm literally just picking up all of their crud, and that's not necessarily good, too. But when you're know, 21 years old, I didn't know that uh, there was things that I could do. Like, one of the things you can do is energetically, you can start seeing shields. You know, uh, I always see this bubble of love all around me, and so that I only allow the things that are my highest good as far as energy comes in, you know, that kind of stuff. And so you can really start energetically protecting yourself um, and you can and at the end of the day you can start cleansing yourself and you can say in your mind what is not of my divine plan I let it go what it is of my divine plan I call it back in those are the things you can do in your meditation you can help yourself uh, really bring yourself back in balance so another thing is you're sensitive to light sounds smells and touches uh, you don't like uh, bright lights and you have a sharp sense of taste touch and smell being empath uh, empathetic means that your mind and body are connected and that uh, by nature makes you more sensitive to all energies in general, even electromagnetic energy and sensory information. I'm really sensitive to touch. 
uh, and stuff like that, especially like energy and stuff like that, and uh, you know, physical touch uh, as well. Uh, one of my closest friends is uh, very sensitive to light. He's also sensitive to sounds and smells. Um, actually, two of my really close friends are really sensitive. My roommate is really sensitive to sounds. He can literally hear things like a pin drop in the house that it'll wake him up. Uh, that kind of stuff and light. You know, my uh, my one friend he uh, he works out with me at the gym. And uh, we went there, and he wore, was wearing sunglasses. It's not necessarily like sunlight. I mean, uh, he has a little bit of sensitivity to that as well. But it's like uh, artificial light. It, it really just gets to him. So he was wearing sunglasses in the gym, and this old man walks up to him and says, sunglasses in the in the gym? What are you doing? And he's like, I'm really sensitive to light. And the guy just walks away shaking his, uh, shaking his head. And these are things that we really need to start thinking about. Let me, like, why would that matter that he wears sunglasses in, in the gym? And it's because artificial light just really bothers him. And actually, it, it can cause a migraine and, and everything else within him. And these are things that if this is happening to you, you're not a weird person. It's just that people are in judgment because they don't understand it. And we judge things that we don't understand. So keep on being who you are. You're not hurting anybody by doing things that you need to do to help yourself. It's like, you know, I try to be as sensitive as possible um, with my roommate, but it's like sometimes I, I don't even realize that I'm being loud or I'm not being loud and just the littlest thing which wakes him up. Those are things we just have to, um, you know, understand in other sensitive people. So, uh, so next thing he says, uh, you know things, uh, you know things you have no proof for. You just know things that you have no logical proof for. In, in other words, you are very strong intuition and you're able to interpret things which gives you insight into things that other people cannot see. If you are sensitive to energy, you may be able to look at someone and see if they are good or bad or whether they are they should be avoided. Maybe you have told your friends that you had a bad feeling about their partner and later you found out they uh, they had cheated on them. So this is something that um, I get this feeling, Just I, I can't explain it, it's like a knowing and something just comes up, and you know, and I'm not always 100% uh, on on point with it, um, but there's just like something. It's like if I don't try, like literally, this knowing just comes out, and I'm like, hmm, I wonder what that's all about. That's kind of your uh, that's your empathy. That's just a, a feeling uh, that you know you're sensitive to energy, and things come up, and and you know you you know you either have to express it or you don't. And I usually try to express it if I need to, if I feel this overwhelming need to. So it's it's something you really have to honor that part of yourself that says you know it says mm, I, mm, I don't know if I feel so good about this. And sometimes it's not just you know that somebody's a bad person, but maybe they're in just a bad place right then, and right now it's just not a good idea for you to be near them because you are sensitive to energy. Remember, your emotions are your GPS. So you have to, if you start to get in that feeling, it doesn't necessarily mean somebody's a bad person. It just means that maybe you shouldn't be around them right then. Maybe they need their own space. Maybe they need to, uh, you know, have some time to themselves. Those are things that we just have to take, um, you know, take in consideration. So, okay. So people tell you that you are too sensitive. People around you tell you that you're too sensitive and you feel more you feel more, you think more, and experience the feelings on a deeper level than most. So, so people are going to say things that you're too sensitive because they don't want to experience their own emotions. So if you're experiencing their emotions, it means that they have to start somehow start paying attention to their own. And people don't want to do that. And that's, you know, that's their problem, not yours. You experience you, you do you. And these are things that people literally try to control you and say, oh, you're just being ridiculous. You're being too sensitive. You're not being sensitive. They're just being jerks and they're being judgmental jerks. It's time for us to allow ourselves to be and allow other people to be who they need to be. We can tell the truth and stuff like that, but lo you know, loving and caring about people and is allowing people to be who they need to be and who they are. And you know, we we like I said earlier, we judge people, we judge things that we don't understand, and that's not cool either. So we just need to let go and let people be who they are. So, and this is one thing you can do to protect yourself and and be in sync with yourself, especially when you're sensitive to energy. Okay, so. Uh, you know when people are lying to you. You can read body language very well. Uh, you are also uh, able to to have a mental image of emotions and psychological states of others. When people lie to you, you can notice the change in their energy field in tone of their voice. You know that they uh, they know they are lying, and you have a good idea of of what exactly is happening within their energy field. Being empathetic gives you the strong. Uh, bullshit detector. So yeah, we're just going to call it what it is, bullshit detector. And and, you know, and this is something that, you know, I, sometimes I just look at people and I'm like, hmm. yeah, okay. 
And, you know, I just, it's not that I, I, I mean, I've lied before and all of you have lied before. So it's like, you can just see it and it's just, it's like, it's reeking off of them. And I'm not necessarily in judgment of them, but it's like, I guess, and what I, what I will tell you is that I'll be like, hmm, so I wonder when they're going to tell me the truth about that. And, you know, a lot of times it, it happens. And one of the things that I do is like, I'll, I'll, I'll sit there and, I, you know, sometimes I'll, I won't come on and call somebody directly a liar. I'll just say, hmm, was well, that everything, you know? Uh, and then say, and I'll start asking him a lot of questions. And so, uh, a lot of times people love to tell the truth. I mean, they'll tell, they'll lie to you here, but then like literally you could wait a couple of days and you could just ask them a certain amount of questions. And then they'll be like, Oh, you know, da, 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 I was just afraid to tell you. And if people really love you and like at first, why are they lying? It's because they're afraid. And, and so, uh, they're afraid of what you're going to think. They're afraid of what you're going to judge of them. They're ashamed of what they're doing. They feel guilty of what they're doing, that kind of stuff. So that's the reason why they lie. So it's it's really something that you can pay attention to. And what I do is I actually just start praying in my meditation, let the truth be revealed. Uh, and, and, you know, and nine times out of ten, the truth just starts flooding in. I mean, it's it's really kind of interesting because um, you'll just kind of sit there and watch it unfold. And that's where life really becomes kind of entertaining uh, when you're looking. And if you're sensitive to energy, what you do is that you uh, – because if you just call somebody a liar in the moment, they're going to lie to you even more. And they're going to get pissed at you for calling them a liar. Why? They're going to – when they start getting angry like that, you already know that they're somewhere. You're like, hmm, if you weren't lying and you were confident in your fact that you're not lying, then – you wouldn't be getting so angry, right? So th think about that. Let's just really think about that for a second. So, um, you know, we have to love people and, you know, hold them accountable. And then what happens is that when they do come forward and you say, well, what, whatever made you think that you had to lie to me? I mean, what, what have I done in my, that has made you feel like you need to lie to me? Or, you know, you, you can, what we want to do is afterwards, we want to create a safe environment for them to start beginning to tell us the truth. There's a story between uh, me and my friend, Virginia Drake. It has happened many, many, many years ago. And I had put on a, a workshop for her or hosted a workshop for her. And a man had wrote a check to me for $40. And, uh, uh, it was initially it was supposed to go to her because she's the one that taught the workshop, and so I had uh, meant to just get it cashed and give it to her, and then I had I had lost literally lost the check, but inside of me I need I had driven to get her in Bradenton, and I uh, needed gas money to go back and forth, and so. You know, I just uh, really I'd lost the check, and that was at Thanksgiving time of that year, and then she came back a month later in December. And uh, we had, she'd come over to my house and we were hanging out and just enjoying ourselves with a group of friends. And then I drove her home. And then the next morning I picked her up and took her to another workshop that a friend of mine was hosting for her. And she, it was, I laughed because, or, because she looked at me and she goes, where is that check? And I had thought I had literally just found it the night before. And I remember, remember I said I had needed gas money and stuff. So uh, there was a part of me that, you know, I said, well, you know, I, I just found it last night, but I, you know, I, so, and I started telling her about, you know, I really need gas money and stuff. And she goes, well, why didn't you tell me that in November? And, and so, and I, and I didn't, cause I was afraid to tell her or ask, uh, for, uh, help to come and get her to, to for the workshop she was teaching that she was getting paid for and she said i would i was already planning on giving you like 50 bucks so you know for you know the gas to uh, drive me back and forth and stuff like that and so um why did i why was i afraid to tell her because she was my spiritual teacher and all that other kind of stuff and i was afraid to talk to her and all these stories i'd created in my mind uh that prevented me from telling somebody that i cared about the truth and and so and that's really what it comes down to. So it's sometimes it's not such a sinister thing behind uh, people lying or holding back the truth. It's because why we're afraid. And so as if you're sensitive to energy, you can pick this up. But we want to be careful because there there could be uh, in their mind they've built the story and they think that they're doing the right thing. So we have to uh, help them, you know, and create a loving space for them so they can feel comfortable to tell you the truth uh, in the future. So. Um, Last slide here says you instinctively avoid energy vampires. You avoid people in relationships with uh, relationships with people that are sucking energy out of you. Since you have had experiences with energy vampires in the past, you know how to identify them. Your energy field is developing a kind of shield and instinctively prevents you from meeting with them. So that's that. Hmm. Not sure if I should be talking to this person right now. Living as an empath is not an easy thing to do, especially if you do. You are living as an empath with a victim mentality, which means putting the keys of your heart in other people's hands. However, you are more than an energy sponge. You have power 
at will and choice. Do not be afraid to use that power and take back the control of your energy field. So there are people out there that are so um, in that victim mentality. And if you're in that victim mentality as well, you know, because you've been there with them for a long time, they're going to be sucking your energy, sucking, 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 and sucking. And literally, they're they're a vampire, you know, and so they're, they're feeding off of your energy to sustain them. And that's not cool either. They need to find their own source of energy, which is them, and so, uh, and not you. And so what happens is that they take all the joy out of your life. They take all the uh, the passion out of you and stuff like that. And that's that's literally what's happening in this world. I actually say that the biggest disease on this planet and is codependency and it's because of uh empaths like myself and others that you know we have allowed people to literally drain our energy and uh prevent us from having that happy life that we all are very deserving of so those are things that we just need to start thinking about so um i'm going to point out here this is uh this is my website and this is the article eight signs that you are highly sensitive to energy the link is down below it's from uh um limitless minds uh or energy fanatics so you guys can uh actually uh you know go and look at the source links and stuff like that is there as well um i am available for sessions by the way guys if you guys are interested uh, if, uh you can actually go to my website and uh there is a you can't really see it here but it's it's uh uh, it says services, and you can go there and you can find out more about having uh, a session with me. Even if you don't live with me locally, I do things through Zoom uh, or uh, Skype. I prefer to do them on Zoom, uh, but I can do them on Skype as well. So um, go ahead and check it out. And so I hope you all have an amazing day, and uh, uh, maybe you'll be able to just watch the webcast of uh, Mount Shasta. And definitely, if you can't, just send some energy there. And uh, I hope you guys have a great day. Many Much uh, love to you guys and peace. All right. Have a great day, guys.